ladies and gentlemen, I am going to read uh, two poems. And they will be helped by, by, by my friends. Uh, one will uh, read the translation to, into English and the other one into French. Well, the poems, well, because I was warned by many uh, of my friends that if I read my um, poems in uh, English um, or maybe even French myself, they become totally incomprehensible. <laughs> so um, I will uh, write, read uh, several lines of each poem just for giving you the feeling of the language. The first, but they need comment. The first poem is about Lithuanian freedom fighter in the 40s, early 40s and 50s. Uh, the Lithuanians were fighting the Stalinist regime. There were uh, groups of partisans in the forest, and some emigres tried to help them. With some help, some very moderate help of uh, English intelligence service, they crossed the Baltic Sea and landed on, on the Lithuanian shore. But uh, due to Kim Philby, who was a um, Soviet spy inside intelligence service, uh, the Soviets were warned that they are coming. They met them, disguised as partisans, and then arrested them or killed them <coughs> or forced them to change sides. This is a true story about a uh, young, very young boy, his name was Justinas Dorchkus, who perished uh, in, uh, yes, on such occasion. So now, just several lines in Lithuanian. Sunkiausia buvo paslėpti iškrauktas ant smėlio valtis, supjaustyti stančią gumą, sukrūsti skutus pakrūmin, nekreipti domės, imerkinti nugarą dygų priešo šlorėtų, už kopų tilėjo neaukštos pušys. Kada vora pajudėjo, jis atsiduso, Stamplės leikė pakarykštis, džiūrlikis prisiminimas o petį kuplinis diržas. Penicilinas, binoklis, užpernai nurašyti šarmijos sandėlio šaudmens, seno ministro laiškas su žodžiais vienybė težyti radijas. Niekad nebuvęs šiame pamaryje, jis klimpo smėlin, praiškė spiglius, lygiavosi draugos trukę, Pažinę stevinę iš kūginio debesio formus. The member of the landing crew. The hardest thing to do was to hide the boats they had dragged up onto the sand, to cut up the tight rubber, shove the scraps under the bushes to ignore the prickly rain that comes down before the dawn, inundating the spine. The low pines kept silent across the dunes. When the line moved, he sighed. His esophagus recalled the memory of yesterday's sick seasickness, and his shoulders, the strap of the backpack. Penicillin, binoculars, ammunition, written off army storage the, the year before last. A letter from an old minister with the words, Long live unity. A radio. Never having been to this seaside before, he sank in the sand, pressed the pine needles, allied himself with his friend's jacket, knowing his homeland by the shape of the cumulus cloud. The needle of the compass danced out the ritual dance, eight kilometers down the road, next to the deserted farm he'd have, I'd have to encounter the bear, the fern blossom, and the goat, nicknames from fables. An unfamiliar group stomped its feet in the glade. The commander, whom he had seen somewhere before in the unfinished war, said the password. Alleviated, his companions disappeared in the dugout, but he lagged behind. His boot slipped on the mossy tussock by the stream, and the blow, missing the back of his head, landed on his elbow. Grabbing his holster in a rush, he was able to feel the muscles in his kneeling leg tense. He saw the black aperture before his eyes and grasped, well, that guy is quicker. 
his brains clinging to the stem of a reed dried up long ago, the rest soaked into the sand. At least he's lucky the Secret Service couldn't extract any codes from it, since were it not for the wet hummock, probably he, like his two friends, who were less fortunate that morning, say what you will, would have misled his people in the, great, in the dark games of the great powers would have reached old age in the stinging cigarette smoke in a provincial cafe with a hundred grams of cognac, trying to persuade everyone, including himself, that he saved young people from bullets and nooses. Or maybe, having been across the Atlantic Circle and back, he would have striven in vain in ignorant offices for compensation for lost time. <clears throat> it's better the way it turned out. No cross, no memory. The trucks stagger on the bumpy strip of gravel road a few steps away from the place where it all happened. The sweat-soaked drivers play the brakes like piano keys. An axe is heard in the, in the pine forest. The farmstead walls turn white. The cuckoo promises we'll live long yet. Three times, or maybe four times as long as he. Whoever died will never return. What's lost is gone. Only the scraps of the rubber boat under the seaside willow still await the Lord's judgment, and the outline of the cloud, exactly the same as then, crawls over the forest glade, and the algae sway in the stream, which he didn't reach then. The title is a, a, a cyclone, and it's about my grandchildren who live in the um, Washington DC area. They are a cyclones every year, which may be even dangerous. And so it's about uh, the, the approaching cyclone, and then um, about, uh, well, history, which also has the, the traits of a cyclone from time to time and the, about the world which never changes, which, which always has those cyclones. So first, a bit in Lithuanian. Kolkas tik žalsvas mirgesysa kranose, spirali sukas ir krupčiure, dabar taip ir to norma. Jimus pasieks gal po vienos kitos. Dangorežis linguos, neliginant liktuvas, kertantis žemino ribą, Viršumų štvindytų metro platformų, plūduros, negyvos žiurkės, mašino įsijungs alarmo sistema, paskui nutils, kaip rimsta su žaistasis, aeroporto seplistik su vėdamų nulogų. Kai kurie praras gyvybę, jų vardų dar nežinau. Šeimina už miesto, kol parduotuvės neuždalytos per kalevainius, Vyras norėjo išvykti toliau nuo paliūdų, žmona nesutiko. Neaišku saugiau Rusija ar antrajam aukšte. Ažuro šaknys dar trumpos jis gali užvirsti ant stogo. Vaikai neturėtų gerdėti tų genčių, bet negirdi. Lamžuoja šunėka, skaito vienas kitam žmogų vorą, patenkinti, kad mokykla nebeveikia, o tam suma patogiausias lipinims ir lengva pagazdinti vilesniuosius su šviestuvu iš šokus iš koridoriaus prieš jaukia naktį mėgamajame maišę. En français par Marion Graf et ces traductions françaises ont été publiées dans le numéro Revue de belles lettres de ce mois-ci. Pour l'instant, ce n'est qu'un scintillement verdâtre sur les écrans. Une spirale tourbillonne et très saute. C'est déjà la norme à présent. Il nous touchera d'ici un jour ou deux. Le gratte-ciel tanguera comme un avion qui franchit le bord du continent. Sur les quais du métro inondés, les rats crevés flotteront. Une alarme de voiture se déclenchera, puis se taira comme se tait un blessé. Dans les aéroports, les civières manqueront. Certains perdront la vie, 
leurs noms sont encore inconnus. Dans une banlieue de la ville, avant que les magasins ferment, une famille fait provision de cornflakes. Le mari aurait préféré s'éloigner du littoral, l'épouse s'y oppose. Le sous-sol ou l'étage Lequel est le plus sûr Le chêne n'a pas encore bien pris racine et il pourrait tomber sur le toit. Ce débat n'est pas pour les oreilles enfantines. D'ailleurs, il n'écoute pas. Il chahute avec le chien. Se lise l'un à l'autre, l'homme araignée, ravi que l'école soit fermée et pour jouer à cache-cache, mieux vaut l'obscurité. Et c'est facile de faire peur aux adultes en débouchant du corridor avec une torche. Avant, une nuit de douillette dans un sac de couchage. Car les enfants sont ainsi faits même lorsque leur famille hésite à franchir quelques frontières. D'ailleurs, là-bas, personne ne les attend, et sans doute que les troubles vont cesser au pays. Le plus souvent, ces discussions font perdre du temps, et déjà frappent à la porte des jeunes gens sveltes portant l'éclair sur l'uniforme. Les soldats en tunique kaki encerclent la demeure, les combattants pour la liberté se dépêchent de châtier des collabos. La foule s'approche avec des machettes. L'homme, comme chacun sait, est la seule créature à posséder cette sagesse qui rend plus puissant que les éléments. Car lui seul évalue un écart de prononciation et la forme d'un crâne. Distingue ceux qui appartiennent au mauvais peuple ou à la classe des perdants. Il fait clair à la fenêtre. Le loriot lance un trille, la pivoine fleurit. La météo favorise toujours les gagnants. À la fin, elle nous est aussi favorable. Le scintillement sur l'écran s'éloigne vers le nord. Arrachée de son socle, une cabine téléphonique gît sur le trottoir. Au bord du sentier, en rondin, il reste un seul réverbère. Une vapeur monte de la terre, chaude. Le chien court après les enfants. Les arbres ont résisté. Le monde est resté comme avant. Exactement. Merci.